It's not a GPU and not a clickbait. What you can see in front of you is a single board computer that features PlayStation 5 APU and yes, it really costs only $100 and I bought it even for $66 but price has gone up. You can easily find one on eBay at least now. Is it good? Well, it has a lot of nuances, but overall, yes, it's awesome. It runs games on high settings with good FPS, good frame time, and basically blows any other option in terms of price to performance. The name of this thing is SROG BC250. Let's tear it down first. I will tell you characteristics and the story of this mysterious device. After removing the backplate, we see 16GB of GDDR6 memory, soldered in the same way as the PlayStation 5 motherboard. This memory is distributed between RAM and VRAM, but more on that later. The APU, however, has some nuances, but here is a time for a brief story of this device. It begins in one of the last mining booms. Miners basically look for every piece of hardware that could mine. AMD had some chips that could not be used for PlayStation 5 because they were not just as good as they should have been. And this is the time when Astro Company made BC250. As you just heard, those chips are worse than regular PlayStation 5 chips. Instead of 8 CPU cores, this one has 6, and instead of 36 GPU compute units, this one has 24, which is still enough to show good results in modern games. The radiator is not supposed to look like this, I vandalized my for a reason, but about it later. I want to tell you about power and ports. It powers with a single 8-pin GPU connector, two others are proprietary and not mandatory to run a board. On the board there is a CPU fan connector, CMOS battery, NVMe slot but it's only PCI Express Gen 2 and has only two lanes. The I.O. features two USB Gen 2, two USB Gen 3, one gigabit Ethernet and one display port. Power and reset buttons are included. So why did I make this thing so ugly? You see, it's designed to run in servers, so the cooling should be like this. If you want quite a fence, you need to use 120mm ones, and if you don't remove the radiator ribs, the air will not go through properly. I spent hours doing this, and I hope you will use another tool for it, since this modification is kinda needed unless you want to cope with the airplane sounds coming from the turbine. I also 3D printed such legs, but I can already tell you that the way I made it is far from the best and has problems with efficiency, so just putting two fans on the top seems like a better option. The surprises don't end here, there are two BIOS versions. In the first, the allocation of RAM and VRAM is 8 and 8 GB, and in the second, 4 and 12. The choice is locked. Playing with 4 GB of RAM is nearly impossible, most of the games will just crash and so on and so forth. But there is a workaround. I myself got one of these unlucky boards. All I needed is to flash a modified BIOS, which allows me to choose the allocation I want. For this you will need a programmer and some knowledge. If you have Raspberry Pi, you can use it as a programmer. The power supply will not turn on its own, so you need to help it. Either with pin or with this uh, crappy Chinese switcher I bought. In general, BC250 wants you to buy a lot of additional things. BIOS is flashed, time to install Windows. Uh, no, Linux, because Windows has no GPU drivers. It will boot, but again, you will not be able to use the GPU. We anyway will boot to Windows to run some benchmarks, just later. All you need to do to make it work on Linux is to paste one command in the terminal. The information is in the GitHub page, so we finally can play games. I decided to check which VRAM allocation would work best. I will only show winner's result, because what do you expect me to do? To make something like this? I doubt it is watchable. Highest settings, Mafia 1 Definitive Edition, Full HD, no FSR, no frame gen in any games I tested today, very playable. I use default benchmark settings for Hitman, that is why 12 RAM for VRAM is one frame ahead. RTX on in Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition, RTX normal, high settings, we have more or less same performance, it's playable 50 FPS, in the combat it will be around 40 FPS again with RTX on without FSR, without frame generation and other things. I probably should have told you earlier, but instead of GPU load our monitoring shows price performance ratio, power consumption numbers are not real, and temperature is high because of one of mistakes of mine, if you just put fans on top of the board it will be lower. However, our thing is not 
throttling, so we continue testing. On low settings without FSR and Full HD in CS2 we are getting around 125 FPS. In actual game you will get even less frames. And I think I know why this happened and this is not only due to the uh, CPU performance on one core. No, there is one more reason and to know it just watch till the end of the video where we will come to the benchmarks on Windows. Horizon Zero Dawn Enhanced Edition Ultimate Quality Full HD no FSR 71 frame per second, more than playable. Ready or not had some stutters in the beginning, but overall the frame time is smooth and we are getting quite high number of FPS on the training range. Of course I have more tests, but it's already enough to see that flashing the BIOS if you have 8 and 8 allocation isn't really worth it, so I would advise against it. Of course if you got an unlucky board, then you don't have much choice, since most of the modern games would just not launch. And the last game I will show you is Doom, because I had some artifacts in Doom and you can clearly see them, these blue flashing things. I will leave link to more tests in the description. Let's boot into Windows and see our benchmark results. I also thought about connecting a second GPU, like I mean an external one, and I did it, but then realized there was literally no sense in it. So I didn't know why did I do that. I just could, you know. Cache and memory benchmark, we see pretty crazy results on write and copy, and we see crazy latency, which may explain why do we get so low FPS in Counter Strike 2. Ryzen Master Utility say they have an unsupported CPU, interesting, why? I was curious enough to download GPU-Z and it turns out that it doesn't know of this graphics device yet. Results for Cinebench and Geekbench you see on your screens. If you are thinking about buying it or not, read the documentation on GitHub. As the author put it well, if you have problems understanding the instructions, it is better not to buy it. If there are no problems or problems are what you came for, it is a great thing, you will not find better performance for this money. Thank you for watching very much, goodbye.